Hello everyone, so today is the vlog from my first day of surgery with Miles Berry in London. I'm kind of split it up into the first day and then the next day because a lot happened and I have to speak through quite a lot because I didn't get that much footage. Um, so I think it'd be a really, really long video if I just condensed the two days into one. So from the first day, I wanted to film loads, I wanted to do an intro video, I wanted to do all of that. Uh, but there are a lot of emotions and a lot going on and um, I have a bit of footage from my camera, a bit of footage from my friend's phone and my phone, but it doesn't really add up to much. So I'm going to speak all the bits in between um, so that you can get a clearer picture of what happened on the day. So it was a really early morning start. I had a 7 o'clock admission. So that was 7am, by the way, at the London Welbeck Hospital, which is near Oxford Street. So I woke up at 4.30 or something. Left the house at six uh, to make my way to the Welbeck Hospital where I met my mum at Oxford Street and we went there and again yeah, just went into the hospital into the waiting area just kind of like with a consultation and it was surprisingly very like awake over there considering how early in the morning it was and when you get there you just have to fill in a few forms and stuff so just a few forms with your details and they also give you like a menu to pick your meals from so they'll give you the uh, I think I was having lunch dinner and then breakfast uh, so they gave me that combo and actually I filled out the normal one and when I told him I was vegan and he gives you another one so if you're also veggie or vegan and um, they might have other dietary requirement menus too then uh, just ask them for one of those and um, just as a heads up for any vegans out there the they don't really specify what's veggie and what's vegan on the menu so if it doesn't sound vegan it's not vegan um, is the way I'm gonna go but I also just clearly wrote that I'm vegan at the top as well after that you get shown round to your room so my room was on the ground floor the same floor where the reception is not where cosmetic surgery partners are upstairs which is where I thought it would be they measure your blood pressure and also your oxygen like with the thing that they put on your finger and then you have to put your compression socks on and your gown on and stuff like that so yeah and then, then there is quite a bit of sitting around I didn't film anything I guess because it was just a lot I, I that day I was actually quite calm I was quite relaxed and my heart rate said otherwise <laughs> my heart rate did not read at any point anything below I think 112 so uh, it was it was really really racing but I felt calm I felt relaxed I I don't know I was quite Zen it was very weird I was expecting to be either excited or nervous I didn't really feel any of those um, until yeah whilst we were waiting in that room and it was a lot of waiting around um, at one point Barry did come in Miles Barry came in and um, everyone left so he just kind of drew on my chest in a few different colored sharpies um, because they were running up so yeah he draws I guess where he has to do incisions and stuff like that and then has just a quick little chat with you uh, which was really nice it was really nice to see him before the surgery and um, as opposed to you know just going straight into it um, so yeah I had a just had a little chat with him and then that was the last time I saw him uh, then your anesthetist comes in and you have a chat with them so mine was um, this lovely lady called Dr Shepherd um, and I had a little chat with her she also talked to me about my blood pressure and stuff like that stuff that I wrote on the form um, I don't know medical stuff and um, so she was really really nice and yeah, then it was a lot of waiting around again. I got changed into my full gear. You get these really, really sexy underwear, which is see-through, uh, which is just, you know, perfect. Um, so I thought I'd care a lot about that, but after surgery, you just really, you don't care. When you need to go, you need to go, and you don't care who's seen your butt. Um, but yeah, got, got changed into all of that, put everything away, gave my mum my valuables and stuff. Otherwise, you can just leave your stuff, by the way. The room's really nice, it's kind of like, a hotel room but with a hospital bed in it. Um, I don't think I actually took a photo of the of the room, there's just photos of me in it because again, like I said, too many emotions that I was dissociating from but they were still there. So yeah, then the anesthesist comes along and she takes you downstairs. So I said my goodbyes uh, and then we headed down. Obviously I've got none of this bit documented at all um, because um, you go down by yourself with the anesthesist, you go down into the basement which is where all the theatres are and this bit like, in my opinion, this bit was kind of creepy. Um, it's like, you go through and it's like theatre one, theatre two, theatre three, and it's really dark because it's in the basement and it's all very, like, hospital looking, but it looks like the back of a hospital, like the bit of the hospital that, like, I don't know, maybe caretakers go to. Like, it doesn't really look, it doesn't look like anything you've seen aside from maybe in horror movies. Uh, so I felt, I suddenly got really, really nervous and then um, she took me over to my room uh, where I laid down on a bed and then, yeah, there was another man in there called Bob. I think he was just helping out. I'm not really sure what his role was. I was too freaked out to think about anything. Um, and then they put ECGs on me. And obviously, because you're having chest surgery, normally you get ECG on your chest. I've had quite a few ECGs in the past. But uh, no, they just put them on your shoulders and like 
kind of at your back under your armpit kind of a thing. Um, fun fact, actually, if you have surgery with Miles Berry, he sits you up, kind of like a rag doll, like this, for surgery. Um, you don't experience this, like you're not aware of it, because you're under anaesthetic when he does it, but yeah, that's why you get the other ECG done somewhere around here. Yeah, and then I had a little chat with my anaesthetist, and there's a little funny video, so I'll, I'll save the contents of the chat so I show you what I said in, what I said to her um, in the video just as I woke up, but yeah, we had a little quick chat, she put, um, put my, like, cannula thing in for the anaesthetic. Um, I later found out that she put another one in, but uh, she put that one in when I was unconscious, so I'm glad about that, really. But yeah, so she just puts the anaesthetic in, they give you a little bit of gas, um, and then from what I remember, I just kind of, she asked me how I'm feeling, and I thought I was, thought I was feeling a bit dizzy, but I thought I was hyperventilating, because I was being given oxygen, and that just feels like something I would do, because I'm an idiot. When she asked me, how are you feeling? I was like, yeah, the room's kind of moving, and she was like, excellent, I'm gonna start counting down now, and then, felt like we'd go in and she just said 10, 9, and I remember her saying 8, and then the next thing I remember was waking up. Um, so yeah, the surgery bit happened in between there, no footage or photos available, but um, it happened. I can I can guarantee it, my chest can confirm um, that that definitely happened. And then, yeah, I came to, apparently you come to, I think it's in the same room that they give you the anaesthetic, or maybe even in the surgery room, I can't remember. Also, apparently there were three people with me. Can't remember that. Um, what I can remember is that I remember rolling my head over to the side and seeing a doctor who I didn't recognise and saying I know you're not meant to get dreams when you're having anaesthetic but I definitely had dreams, I definitely just had a dream, there were two people in my dream and I definitely just dreamt even though I had anaesthetic. And I said this all while staring like right at this man, I didn't know who it was but it, like in the corner of the room. And then I don't remember anything until you get to like, until I got to my room and then the next thing I remember is they wheel you in on a bed, but it's not the bed that you'll be sleeping on. So then when you get there, they tell you that you have to move yourself from your bed that like you had surgery on or whatever, the other bed, to your sleeping bed. And what I did was I lifted my head up and went, you what? So yeah, there you go. Uh, that was strange. Everything was also really blurry, by the way, because obviously I didn't have my glasses, but also uh, you can't produce tears. Uh, when you're under general anaesthetic, so they put this like weird like gel gloopy stuff on your eyes So when I was opening my eyes, I couldn't see a thing, they were telling me to get on a bed And I was like, I just had surgery, like what do you want from me? So yeah, I did that, but I don't remember it, I, I genuinely, I don't remember anything for ages now Here is a video of uh, just what I was talking about when I came to, again, do not remember this at all but definitely happened. We had a hat with zoo animals on it. Who was that? The, the, the anis Oh, the anesthetic lady. She says she's been doing anesthetic for 37 years. Oh. And 25 for like chest surgery and stuff. Yeah. For reconstructive surgery. She says she really likes the patients. That's why she's worked so long. I can't actually remember her name. Raving reviews. Yes. Was that the highlight of today? Her hat. Her yeah. hat. And then everything's just a bit shady. I remember talking to my mum. I remember talking to my friend who visited me, although I don't remember any order or anything. Um, and then, yeah, I had to drink a lot of water. I remember the nurse kept coming in and telling me to drink more water and more water. And I did need it. Like, I felt, my throat felt like I had just been eating like kilograms of sand. It felt so dry. Made for a hella masculine voice though. <laughs> but um, yeah, it felt really, really horrible. Um, so I was drinking a lot of water. Um, Pain-wise, I don't actually really remember pain that much. I was really uncomfortable. Um, I wasn't in that much pain, which actually surprised me. But uh, Miles Berry actually puts local anesthetic on your chest during the surgery so that you wouldn't feel much pain when you woke up. So I guess it was probably just, just a bit of that. Thanks mate, appreciate it. So yeah, I didn't really get that much pain. I did feel a bit sick, but not particularly sick. Like I did press the buzzer thing that they tell you to press if you need help a few times because I thought I might throw up, but then I was fine. Um, so yeah, just a tip by the way, just take anti-sickness. Just if you feel sick, just ask for it straight away. And uh, Barry told me this, but I don't know, I guess I was trying to be hardcore or something and I didn't take it. And I didn't throw up or anything because I have a phobia. Um, the only plus side of having a phobia throwing up is that you won't throw up. But yeah, I, I yeah, definitely just, just take it. I know my friend threw up um, just not long after surgery, like a few hours after, so yeah, just take the anti-sickness. But yeah, then I got my meal, of which I have a photo over here and a really 
great photo of me having the meal. I looked so happy, don't I? So, yeah, which was, it was alright, it was quite nice, it was nice to have a little bit of soup. At some point, not that I remember at what point, but I'm pretty sure Barry and the anesthesiologist did come in and see me. I know it happened, I feel like it happened, but I just can't remember it very well. Um, I just remember them agreeing with the yoghurt and the two smoothies that my mum and my friend bought me whilst I was in surgery, so you know, that's good, and uh, great that it's the only thing I remember my surgeon said to me. Oh, he said everything went well, he said he was really really happy and positively surprised, which were his own words, so that was good as well. Yeah, and then I did feel really really sick around dinner and I did take anti-sickness then. Yeah, it got to a point where I genuinely thought I'd throw up and that horrified me. So, yeah, I I took some injectable stuff. It That worked so fast, it was amazing. Oh, I did have pain at one point. I don't remember at what point during the day this was, but I definitely had it because I was given morphine. So, uh, yeah, definitely had pain because I was given some like liquid morphine stuff, which was great, by the way. I got so giddy. I really, really enjoyed liquid morphine. I could have... I could have some more of that, please, and thanks. Yeah, that, that was good. Yeah, and I got dinner, dinner was alright. And um, also, in between all of this, I haven't mentioned, like, if you want to go to the toilets, you've got drains, so you're gonna need a hand. Plus also, like, the first time I went to the toilet, I was quite dizzy. Um, so my nurse, like, picked up the drains for me and helped me get up, and then kind of walked me and held on to me as I was, like, swaying side to side like a drunk person on my way to the toilet. Um, like I said, not glamorous, like, the back of your gown thing is open, and everyone can see your butt, you know what, I just needed to pee. Um, so, yeah, you go there and once you're finished doing whatever, they'll come and pick up your drains from the floor again, like the bottles, and help you get back to bed and stuff, so um, I called them for help for a few times with that. I think eventually, like, by the fifth or sixth time, I was probably confident enough to do it by myself, but you know what, I was paying to be helped to do these things, so you just gotta ask for help to do these things, uh, which is exactly what I did. Yeah, I had dinner and then I had like my own medication that I have to take as well as some painkillers for the night because I started getting more pain. I don't know what they gave me, I think it was tramadol, but I'm pretty sure my paperwork it doesn't say that it's tramadol, so I don't really know what I got given, but it worked, so whatever, and yeah, I slept like a baby through the night. My nurse was actually shocked. They come in and check on you every single hour, and I do remember opening my eyes a few times and seeing a nurse, which was not actually my night nurse, so they have like a switch over and they reintroduce themselves and stuff, but yeah, someone came into my room to check and like close the window and like check my um, drains and stuff, but I, I was basically asleep for most of it. And my nurse actually said she's surprised that I slept so well, and um, you know, even the surgeon, even Miles Berry before surgery warns you, you will not have a normal night's sleep, do not expect one, and I had a normal night's sleep. It was perfectly fine, actually, apart from the fact that they wake you up really early in the morning. So yeah, I think I'm gonna stop the video there. I've got, I think, like, I don't know, the screen's too far, it's like 13 or 14 minutes worth of video, plus all the photos and all the videos that I'm going to cut into this, so um, I think that'll be it for this video. I will be doing another video where I'm going to talk about the day after surgery and going home and how my journey was and how my first day post-op was and stuff like that. So yeah, I think that'll be it. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, just as a reminder, I will be doing a Q&A um, as part of my two weeks worth of boredom, recovery, etc. So I'm assuming there might be some questions coming out from this video, actually. So if you do have any questions, if you could put them in the comments or send them as an ask to my Tumblr, which is the sam that I am .tumblr .com, uh, with the hashtag Sam answers questions and I will do a video in a few weeks where I answer all of your questions. Um, if you have something that you really, really want to know right here, right now and then you can ask it without the hashtag but yeah if you submit some to the Q&A that would be awesome and um, it would be nice to have some questions for a Q&A that's what it is for oh also just like sneaky note if you do want to see photos of my chest I do already have some photos and stuff revealed on my tumblr um, I've got a video and stuff coming for this channel but I've got other videos that I have to put up before so um, my reveal will be a bit late but I've got kind of like real-time updates on how I'm feeling, how I'm doing photos etc on my tumblr which again like I said is the sound that I am at tumblr.com link in the description uh, so you can go check it out there follow me there for more kind of up-to-date updates I hope like once I get up to date with my channel and videos and stuff that I want to do that I will be posting stuff up to date in terms of surgery but you know, life's busy, even when you're at home, doing nothing, because you're re recovering from top surgery, but whatever. If you like the video, then please do give it a like, uh, please comment your questions down below um, in the comments, like I said, or on my Tumblr with the hashtag Sam answers questions for the Q&A, um, and please do subscribe if you want to keep updated on my journey. I've also got a 7 months on tea update coming soon, so that's super duper exciting. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all next time.
camera's so far away this time.